Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at using the work of a specialist in an audit. This topic is covered in an auditing course in college as well as the CPA exam. Something that you need to be familiar with before sitting on the exam. Now if you are sitting for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website farhatlectures.com. No, I don't replace your CPA review course. You might have your own CPA review course like Becker, Roger, Wiley, Surgeon, Climb, or any other course. That's fine. I don't replace them. What I can be, I can be that useful addition that's going to add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. So what's the difference between what I do and your CPA review course? The CPA review course review the material with you. I teach you the material. I add knowledge. And by adding knowledge, you would add points to your score. And this is what I do. And here's your risk. Are you willing to risk one month of subscription to try out my system? Because you can cancel if you don't like it. And that's your risk. Your gain, your potential gain, is me helping you pass on the CPA exam. Is that something you're interested in? $30 to find out. And if it is, good, you'll keep it. If not, you lost $30. The payment is passing the CPA exam. And if not for anything, check out my website for your university CPA score. Find out, on average, how well does your classmate or how well does your university students score on the CPA exam. This is a good indication about the rigor of your program. Also, I do have other accounting courses and finance courses. And please check out my LinkedIn account, connect with me, and you can review the recommendation of other students that used my material to help them pass the CPA exam. People that work in small firm, medium firm, big four, so on and so forth. Please like this recording on YouTube, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So using the work of a specialist in an audit. So the first thing is the auditor, they must have sufficient understanding of the client business. Of course they would. Otherwise, if you don't understand the client business, you would not know whether you would need a specialist or not. Now, why do you, why do you need a specialist if you understand the client business? Because the, 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 the job might require some specialized knowledge that the CPA firm do not possess. So if we don't have that specialized knowledge, well, it might be necessary then to consult someone that someone is a specialist. Now, what could be some examples? Well, let's assume you're auditing a company that have diamond. Well, you're not an expert in diamond. You will need to hire an expert in diamond, some, some person like this, that's going to tell you how, you know, the replacement cost of the inventory, because that's something you need to know. Or you may need an actuary. Well, to determine the appropriateness of the recorded value of the insurance loss reserves. Now, now many CPA firms, now they do hire their own actuary, but if you don't have an actuary because you need to pay them more and you don't have the work for them, then, you know, there doesn't add any value. But if you have your own actuary, you don't need to hire a specialist. But if you don't have your own actuary on board, then you will need to hire a specialist. So if you're a CPA, frankly, and uh, you are really good in mathematics and calculus, advanced math, why not go for your actuary exam? Also, an attorney. You may need an attorney sometime to interpret the legal, the contract or the titles, uh, the business valuation, so on and so forth. So sometimes you might need an attorney. If you have one, that's fine. If not, you will need to hire one and that that attorney will be considered a specialist you will need a software engineer if you're auditing an engineering company software engineering they might have different projects and those different projects could be a different degree of completion you want to book the revenue well how far are they in 20 percent 30 percent 45 percent you will need a software engineer that understand the codes to tell you how far are they uh, uh, how far are within the degree of completion. So this way you can book the proper revenue. Now the specialist can be employed by the client, can be employed by the firm sometime, and sometimes it's unaffiliated with the client or the firm. So just basically it's hired as an outside party, hired as an outside party. Now the auditor will have certain responsibilities because the auditing standard established those, those responsibilities for selecting the, the specialist as well as reviewing their work. So what would the auditor need to do? Well, the auditor need to understand, first you need to evaluate their professional qualification. Well, if you're hiring an actuary, you want to make sure that they pass the exam, they have the proper certification, they have X years of experience, you, may, you wanna check the references, so you just don't hire anyone right off the street, okay? Also, you need to understand the objectives and the scope of their work. What, what are you hiring, hiring them for? And what's the scope of their work? How much work are they doing for you? 
at some point that's it that's you're done with the work thank you very much okay also you need to be aware of any relationship between the client and the specialist especially if the if the specialist is hired by the client well you have to be aware of this well why why because it might impair the specialist objectivity and by default independence we have to remember we have to have independence that could be impaired in this area so we have to be careful okay now bear in mind the use of the specialist does not affect the auditor responsibility for the audit simply put you cannot say well the specialist gave me the report therefore i'm not responsible not at all the auditor is still responsible for the audit that's that's part of their work they hire the specialist the specialist is not really independent from them in a sense that it's part of the audit task force so it's part of the auditor's report audit auditor's uh, responsibility now should we refer to the audit uh, to the specialist well under normal circumstances, and what, what I mean by under normal circumstances, if we're giving an unqualified opinion, okay, we will not refer to the specialist at all. When do we report, when do we refer to the specialist? Here we go. Very specific circumstances. If the specialist report, so the specialist is going to give us a report, whatever that report is, and that report resulted in a modification of the audit report such as qualified we're going to give qualified adverse and disclaimer because of the specialist report because the specialist told us something okay gave us a report and because of that report we modified the audit opinion then we'll have to mention obviously why did we modify the opinion because we say we relied on the specialist report under those circumstances we will mention them otherwise simply put they don't exist as far as we're concerned especially if we're given unqualified opinion why would we mention them okay now at the end of this recording i would like to remind you if not for anything check out my website to determine how well is your university doing for the cpa exam i'm going to invite you again to check out my resources because i don't replace your Becker, I don't replace your Roger, Glam, or Wiley. I can be that useful addition, the useful addition. I hope uh, I can help you pass the exam. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.